Doctor Strange is finally here. It is the newest film from Marvel. It is the 14th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I, of course, was very excited for Doctor Strange because it's the newest film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and also the premise. I've been hearing things about this film and the visual effects and the type of film this is and I would just start to get really, really excited for it the more it crept upon me. And all I can say is, not only have Marvel done it again, but they've done it in a rather different way. I'm just gonna get this out of the way right now. The visuals in this film are absolutely incredible. These are some of the best visual effects I have seen all year long. It was so trippy and mind-bending the way these sequences were brought to life on the big screen. I was just sitting there with my jaw on the floor at how amazing these sequences were. Seeing the sorcerers bend and shape reality whilst in combat with each other was incredibly entertaining to watch. They are some of the best and most exciting action sequences I have seen this year. Doctor Strange does what the Marvel executives and Kevin Feige have been saying it was going to do all this time. It opens up a brand new corner of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in terms of the sorcerers, the alternate reality and alternate dimensions and I cannot wait to see where they take this in future films. The mythology to me was so fascinating. And thinking about the sorcerer alternate reality stuff in terms of the wider Marvel Cinematic Universe, it just widens the playground by such a humongous margin. This is why I love the MCU as a franchise. There's so many different places in the universe to go and tell stories in and so many different genres to explore. Moving away from all the weird trippy visual effects stuff, how is the actual film? In my opinion, very good. I liked Doctor Strange very much, but I didn't love the hell out of it as much as I wanted to, unfortunately. One thing I really liked about this film was Stephen Strange's story because at the very start of this film, he's a brilliant neurosurgeon, he's quite arrogant and egotistical, he knows for a fact that he's the best neurosurgeon in that hospital. And then he gets into quite a brutal car accident, he ruins his hands, so then he goes off to find a cure for his hands and he runs into the ancient one. Then he begins training in the mystic Arts, and over time he begins to realise that it's not all about him, there's more important matters out there, and I really like seeing him, you know, learn that. I, re I really like seeing arrogant people take a step back and look at the bigger picture for once and realise that not everything revolves around them. And it was really good seeing that in this film with Stephen Strange. And Benedict Cumberbatch brought it in this film just like you knew he would. He adds that egotistical edge at the start, but throughout the film you start to relate to him a little bit when he's trying out the magic for the first time. You're making the same faces he's making when the Ancient One's showing him all these things. He's like, oh my god, what is this stuff? The rest of the acting and characters were pretty good also. Chiwetel Ejiofor was good as Mordor. He doesn't play an incredibly large role in the film, but when he's there, he has some good words of wisdom, some good teachings he gives to Strange, and when he throws down, he's actually quite a badass. He kicks some ass. Speaking of wisdom, Tilda Swinton as the Ancient One was very calm, very interesting, and again, very badass. When she has to kick ass, she kicks some ass. Rachel McAdams was not really in the film that much. Stephen Strange goes to her a few times to heal up and get some medical assistance and that's all she really does in the film. She just heals him a few times and she doesn't really play a big role in the film so if you're going into this film hopping for a great Rachel McAdams showcase, she gives a good performance in the film but she's just not a main part of the film per se. And finally, Mads Mikkelsen as Cassilius, the main villain. I'm sorry if I pronounced his name wrong. Now Mads Mikkelsen is a great actor and he was very good in this film. He had a really good screen presence and the character has some really cool abilities but he wasn't really that compelling of a villain I know a lot of you have just rolled your eyes going yep yeah, Marvel have blown it with another villain he's not a terrible villain I really liked his design I liked his abilities like I said and I did understand his motivations for his evil plan but I just never really felt for him as a character I think good villains are the ones where you can really relate to them and connect to them emotionally I just didn't feel that with Mads Mikkelsen in this film sticking with my issues with this film because like I said I didn't love the film as much as I wanted to. The film lacked quite a bit of energy for me personally. The first half of the film revolves around Strange training in the Mystic Arts and trying out some magic at the Temple of the Ancient One. And it is a bit slow and it takes a short while for him to transition into Doctor Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme. And I wasn't bored in that time, I just wasn't incredibly entertained either. Then the second half is all the crazy, mind-bending, trippy action sequences like I just mentioned. But the first half for me was not always the most interesting. There's some really good moments where he's trying out the magic and learning more about the mystic eyes, but overall it kind of started to drag just a little bit after a while. A thing that might have slightly affected the energy of the film is the fact that Doctor Strange is actually a, a surprisingly more grounded serious film compared to other Marvel films, and I'm not complaining about this, I'm not saying that superhero films should not be grounded and serious, I'm just saying compared to a lot of the other Marvel films, it's a lot more grounded and serious, and it just might have affected the energy for me a little bit. However, this being Marvel, there is humour in the film, and the humour in Doctor Strange was kind of 50-50 for me. Some 
sometimes it was clever and it had me chuckling. There's this one recurring joke, especially between Strange and Wong. I thought that was quite funny. But other times it obviously didn't work for me. Like there's this one part where Doctor Strange and Mads Mikkelsen's character are fighting and Strange tries to get this weapon off the wall but the cloak is wearing the cloak of levitation. It has it's like, like a mind of its own and it's like pulling Strange back and Strange is like trying to run and his legs are flapping like that. It was a little tiny bit cartoony. That moment especially kind of took me out of the film a little bit. And I'm not saying that Marvel should completely ban all humour because of this. I'm just saying the humour in Doctor Strange for me was a little bit 50-50. In the end though guys, I still really liked Doctor Strange. Putting the uncompelling villain and the lack of energy aside, this is an entire new playground that Marvel has opened up filled with fascinating mythology, crazy, trippy, weird sequences and visual effects that will just blow you away. On top of that, add an interesting arc for the main character and great performances by the whole cast and in my opinion you have an imperfect but overall another solid entry into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm going to give Doctor Strange a 4 out of 5. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of Doctor Strange when you do get a chance to see the film and thank you very much for watching as always. If you want to see more of my stuff be sure to click on one of the annotations right here.